We have long been fascinated by cults, but seldom get to see inside their world. But in April of 2007, National Geographic Channel was granted access to the strong city cult and its leader, Michael Travessa, who claims to be the Messiah. I am the embodiment of God. I am divinity and humanity combined. Michael has opened the gates of Strong City to let the world share the word of God. Go with us and bless us today. He has told his followers that the world will soon end and that he is their only route to heaven. But who joins a cult like this? And how do the members live? For God to bring a plague other messianic cult leaders have predicted the end and guaranteed salvation. But could the pursuit of heaven go horribly wrong, as it has for some other cults in American history? And is Strong City just a pretext for more earthly desires? I took off my clothes and I laid naked on his bed and he just held me and it was like a whole new picture opened up to me of God. But 31 people have left since Michael claimed to be the son of God. And some ex-members have alleged on the internet that in 2006, Michael lay naked on his bed with a number of the cult's girls. Among those mentioned are Esther and Danielle. I don't know, it was probably in the beginning part of July. Um, Michael wrote a post about how um, the only way to kind of like come to resolution in your life is to be naked before God. Mm -hmm. It just puzzled me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but it was like something was in me, and what was in me was, this means really, this mm -hmm. means literally, physically naked. And it was in me that it meant with Michael. So, so he, ha he took me, to went to the bedroom and uh, laid down, and he uh, held me, and somehow, it was like all of heaven was open to me. Somehow I started to see God. Well, somehow, as the Son of God holding me. Yeah. As an ex-member, Prudence Welch knows the effect of Michael's words. Her internet site publishes messages Michael has sent to his followers. She says he uses the power of suggestion to plant thoughts in their minds, thoughts they then believe are their own. For Prudence, it's nothing more than simple manipulation. And so he started writing about being naked. <laughs> you have to be with me naked and unashamed. So then pretty soon, they're getting the picture and they're all begging to lay naked with him. And then it's like, well, I'm not the one that asked for that. They're the ones begging me for it. They're the ones that want to consummate with me. I didn't do, you know, I didn't do anything to want that. You know, so it's like that's how he has controlled them. But it's not unusual for a cult leader to engage in sexual relations, even those who claim divinity. Well, sex is one of the uh, very common control mechanisms uh, used in cultic groups. If you're able to control someone's sexuality or their sexual behavior, that's reaching into the deepest part of that person. I mean, and that's also uh, touching what for many people is uh, not only the most intimate part of themselves, but the place where people are often troubled or questioning or unsure of themselves. After Esther and Danielle laid naked with Michael, he said God needed seven virgins for a ceremony to mark the forthcoming destruction of the earth. Over the next few days, five more virgins came to Michael to lie naked. Two were underage, but Michael insists the virgins' actions were instructions from heaven. Well, it was God. God came down on them and told them to do it. Nakedness is another symbol of our relationship with God. We are naked and unashamed.